Don't I haven't posted in a while, guys. I uh, apologize. University started back up, so I haven't got much time. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to put out this quick update video to let you guys know on the state of the game, let you know I'm not dead, um, and that the channel is still going. <laughs> so subscribe. All right, welcome back everyone to another devlog. It's been a while, um, that's for sure. <laughs> There's been a bunch of new changes, uh, mainly things in the background which aren't very visible. However, there has been a few big changes um, in the foreground as well. First thing, as you can see, the player now has a different idle animation where he starts looking around. Our dog now has a sitting animation um, our dog also gets up and follows us running um, and the running animation plays. As we slow down, the dog's walking will change uh, and then he'll slow down and then eventually take a seat next to us uh, if we stay idle for a while. There we go. And he will just look at us. Very nice. Uh, apart from that, we now have weapon trails. So uh, when we attack, we have this white trail appear with our weapon. Very epic. Um, and that's to do with our state machines. So I've transferred the entire player controller to now use state machines instead, which is very awesome. What that means is now I can create some nice custom states for the player. So let's say when he's gliding, his movement style changes, which actually is the case, which I'm going to show you guys in just a sec. The first thing I'm going to show you guys is if I start hitting a tree, what used to happen is we try to sync it up via code, but it would sometimes lose sync and wouldn't look very nice. Now I've switched it to use animation events. So as I hit a tree, um, at the exact moment the axe hits the tree, that's when the tree shakes. So it's been synced up perfectly. Same thing with the rock. Um, that works very nicely as well. Um, and with the state machines, it means that there is no more glitches where if I was trying to open my inventory or pick up a rock, sometimes it would do one, not the other. Um, now it does exactly what it needs to do, um, which is very awesome as well. Another thing with the inventory is if I open my inventory, our camera still looks to our, towards our player, um, but it has this little bopping effect or camera shake effect, which is with the Cinema Machines camera. If you're interested to know how these effects and whatnot works, let me know. I might make a tutorial for them if I am bothered later on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you guys want to see tutorials, let me know for any of this. Uh, more than happy to show you guys how I did it. So if you guys remember the old gliding system, it used to be that I would just glide in the midair and it would be the same movement as this uh, where I just rotate randomly and yeah, it just wouldn't look very nice. However, now I've changed it so it looks a little bit more like Fortnite's gliding, which is a lot better in my opinion uh, than what it used to be. So now I can actually turn and everything. Um, I think it's quite nice. <laughs> uh, so I'll probably keep it as this. The old system just didn't appeal to me. This looks more like I'm actually flying through the air. So. Yeah, the last sort of thing that has been in the works is a day and night cycle. So um, if I open up my scene view, we have this sun setup and I'll go over it in a separate tutorial if you guys want to see how I did the day and night cycle for this. It doesn't currently work. However, it's only not working because it's not enabled. Um, the way it works is basically over time, I rotate this sun object um, and this is an HDRP. So all the atmosphere and everything changes with it automatically. Um, and as the sun sets, you'll realize obviously it gets darker. On the other side of our world, our moon will rise. Eventually. Moon. Where's my moon? So as I rotate the sun, let me just locate it real quick. Here we go. As our sun sets, the whole atmosphere and everything will change the fog color and everything very nicely. And on the other side of our world, our moon will slowly rise. That's our moon and it will eventually get to the top here. And then obviously the moon will set um, around here. There we go. Very nicely. And once our moon sets, our sun will rise on the other side. Perfect. Um, so what this code does is basically just rotate that over time. Um, if you guys want to see a tutorial for any of this, again, let me know. So in essence, that's basically most of the changes that has happened since the last devlog. Um, a lot of this stuff was again in the background, um, moving the state, mo moving the character controller to use state machines. It did take a little bit of time. Uh, it was the first time I was using state machines. So uh, yeah, uh, a lot of research, <laughs> but it was uh, definitely worth it because that's what the state machine allows me to do now is for each action on the player, I can specify uh, very specific, um, uh, what's it called very specific motions. 
The other thing it saves me from having to do is instead of having to say, oh, if this, if this, if this, and this uh, for every action, you know, are we standing? Are we on ground? Are we flying? Blah, blah, blah. I don't have to include that anymore. I can, it's, it just works like an animated controller. So each state can go to a certain state only. Um, if you guys want to see a tutorial on that, let me know. It's actually quite interesting and I uh, highly recommend it, uh, using, your, using state machines for every character. Um, unless it's a very simple character, but in most cases, use a state machine. I highly, highly recommend it. The terrain generation is the next thing I want to work on just because it seems like it's something that is quite big. So I should probably get it done and out the way so I can move on to some of the more details of the game. Uh, you know, not the finishing touches because we still got a long way to go, but things like the inventory, which is also quite big, but I want to get the terrain sorted out first, just so I can tick that off. Um, and relatively the train is harder to do than the inventory anyway. So, <laughs> uh, I want to tick that off real quick, um, before I move on. Um, that said, I appreciate all the support you guys are giving, uh, for the game, for the channel as well. If you haven't joined the discord yet, make sure you do that. I'm taking suggestions for the game on the discord. So if you have any ideas, like add a jetpack, then let me know there. Um, I might add it in the next devlog <laughs> or just as a short fun uh, video. Um, but yeah, so just wants to update you guys with how it's going. I'm not dead. I'm still alive. I promise <laughs> the game is, is not over. I'm still working on it. Uh, things have slowed down a little bit with university now picking it back up, but you know, who needs classes anyway? <laughs> Before we end the video, I just want to say a huge thanks to my patrons. Um, these videos wouldn't be possible without them. So if you want to be a patron, the link is in the description. You get access to source code, you get recognized in the discord server, and you get shout outs at the end of videos like this. With that said guys, I will catch you in the next video. Take care and peace.